Hi there guys, my name's Alan. I'm here at Shady Pine Saloon today in Sydney. This is a very good friend of mine, Fred, joining me from Melbourne and we're here to talk to you about bourbon for the fine drinks movement. Bourbon's a pretty big spirit to cover, mate, so how about we break it down into some simple parts. First, I think we need to talk about the definition of bourbon. Today's story of bourbon really starts on May the 4th, 1964, when the United States government decided they'd make bourbon the official national spirit. That sounds like a pretty smart move, if you ask me. Yeah, I think it was a pretty good call, because um, what they did was they not only safeguarded the spirit and that style, but they created a lot of jobs in the meantime, all the way down the line from the farmer to the distiller and every step of the way. Perfect. So what are we going to start looking at first then? The first rule or regulation is that all bourbon must be made from a recipe, or mash bill as it's generally called, that contains a minimum of 51% corn. Next up, bourbon must be aged in brand new charred oak barrels. Wait, um, is that any kind of oak? It's mainly American oak, but it can be any kind as long as it is oak. Bourbon is an American thing, so it must be made in the United States. While still today about 95% of all bourbon is made in Kentucky, it can actually be made anywhere in America. It is distilled to a maximum of 80% ABV or 160 proof. And the barrel entry proof, so the strength of the spirit going into the barrel, cannot be more than 62.5% ABV, or in the United States, 125 proof. Should we go into a little bit and explain what proof actually is? Good idea. Proof is basically the US measurement for alcohol. It's exactly double the ABV or alcohol by volume, which is generally what we call it in Australia. To be a bourbon, you cannot add anything to the spirit after it's been aged. So no flavoring or caramel coloring or any additives. In fact, the only thing you can add is water for bottling. And while we're on the subject of bottling, bourbon has to be bottled at no less than 80 proof or 40% ABV in the US at least. Otherwise, it's called diluted. Another couple of points are, to be a straight bourbon, you must be aged for a minimum of two years and any less than four, then your age statement must be on the label. And maybe the last thing, if you do have an age statement on the bottle, this must be the age of the youngest whiskey in the bottle. So we've got the facts of what legally makes up a bourbon, but now we need to explain what they all mean when bourbon is produced. Cool. Now that we know what bourbon is, let's talk about production or how this stuff is actually made. To make bourbon, we follow some very simple steps. The grains come into the distillery and then they get milled. And then we cook those grains under high temperatures to extract the sugars. They then get cooled down before we pump them into fermenting tanks where they're mixed with yeast to create basically a beer. And then double distillation starts with a beer or column still, and then finishes with a clean spirit in a pot still, otherwise known as a doubler. The spirit off the still isn't bourbon yet because it hasn't been aged. We call it white dog, and this goes into charred barrels for aging. Let's explain what a mash bill is. Right, so a mash bill is basically the recipe of grains selected by the distiller to create the flavor of the whiskey that they're after. Grains are cooked under high temperatures and then cooled to extract the sugars from them. With corn being the most dominant, the other grains are made up with rye or wheat and a little bit of malted barley, which is actually not really for flavour, but more for fermentation. So what you're then left with is two distinct styles of bourbon, uh, one which is a rye mash and one which is a wheated mash. But that's not the same as sour mash though, is it? No, it's not, because uh, sour mash actually refers to a process where a portion of the previous fermentation is retained and put into the new one. It's called a nest egg and helps kickstart the next batch. Then after fermentation comes distillation and all bourbon is double distilled. The first being in a column still or what it's called a beer still and the second in a pot still or a doubler. Right, and the spirit off the still is called White Dog and this is then entered into the freshly charred oak barrels ready for the next step which is aging. Now aging is where the magic happens, just like my bedroom. Aging and selection are the two key elements to separate the flavour profiles and state tastes of all bourbon from the same mash bill, same distillery, same warehouse, even on the same floors, side by side. It's true. All bourbon gets aged in a standard 200 litre charred oak barrel. There are levels of charring that are selected by the distiller, which basically means how long they torch the wood for. The barrels are then filled and they begin their journey by being rolled onto what's called a rick, which uh, stands in a rick house or warehouse. I know a really good guy that's called Rick. The Rick is a freestanding structure that houses the barrels, usually standing three high on each floor of a warehouse. 
A warehouse generally has around seven or eight floors. At Buffalo Trace, each warehouse contains between 25 and 40,000 barrels. And the middle floors are known as the sweet spot. Each warehouse has a different effect on the barrels that are aging within. This is because when the spirit is inside the barrel, it is aging. Or in Kentucky, they call it breathing. In the warm weather, the spirit expands into the wood. Then when it gets cooler, it contracts and pulls out all the color and flavors. In the sweet spot, the middle floors, uh, these provide the best kind of balance of flavors. One thing to remember about aging is the angel share. This is basically the evaporation loss from a barrel due to the temperatures in the warehouse. To explain that, um, just picture a barrel being filled right to the top and in its first year, it loses 10% of its total volume. 7% of that goes straight into the wood because it's thirsty, it's just being burned. Fact. Then, each year that the barrel ages, it loses 3% through evaporation. That's the angel share. When I die, I want to be an angel in Kentucky, that's for sure. So when you break it down, if a bourbon is 10 years old, it's generally lost about 38% of its total volume. That's pretty big investment. It's a long time to wait, but this is such a critical part. Until the distiller decides the whiskey is ready to bottle, that's where it stays breathing and resting. And just to paint a picture for you, currently it's reported that there are 4.5 million residents in Kentucky and 5.5 million barrels of bourbon. When I was at Buffalo Trace, they told me that if they stopped making whiskey right now, they'd still have enough to last for the next 20 years. Not bad, that's a comforting thought, isn't it? I reckon so. All the things you need to know about bourbon are the majority of the recipe must be corn, at least 51%. Cannot be distilled higher than 80% ABV. Must be aged in new charred oak barrels. If aged less than four years, then the age must be stated on the label. No additives, colouring, flavouring of any kind. Can't be made anywhere in the USA. And it, it tastes, tastes delicious. delicious. Even at 3am Sydney.